Greetings from Asgard. I'm your on-the-scene Midgardian reporter, Alex Dotson. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably didn't see the first Thor or the Avengers. So before I go any further, I strongly recommend that you stop watching my episode and go watch the first Thor movie in preparation for this weekend's showing of Thor 2, The Dark World, here at the JC Cinema. Moving on now, welcome back my informed viewers. Are you a fan of superheroes? Of course you are, because if you're not, there's not a whole lot of movie options for you with the current oversaturation of comic book films these past couple of years. So let's just assume that you enjoy handsome and muscular white men wearing costumes and fighting generic bad guys while exhibiting minimal character growth over a multi-film span in fear of running out of ideas before the studios squeeze every last penny out of America's wallet. Whew, that was a supersized sentence. Now, don't get me wrong, I had fun watching Thor 2. The first Thor is actually one of my favorite superhero movies, right up there with the first Iron Man, Batman Begins, and The Amazing Spider-Man. That's the reboot. But do you notice a theme here? Superhero sequels rarely live up to their predecessor. None of them are actually bad, except for Iron Man 2 and The Dark Knight Rises. And some of them are particularly pretty good, like Iron Man 3. But most of them are just generic money grabs that are a must-see. So you can follow the thin, overarching storylines in the big team-up movies like The Avengers. I honestly don't think it's too much to ask for a little character development in my blockbusters. For God's sakes, Robert Downey Jr. has more range than just playing himself in two Sherlock Holmes movies and as Iron Man four separate times. Don't believe me? Go see his two Oscar-nominated roles in Tropic Thunder and Chaplin. You'll never look at Tony Stark the same way again. But at this point in the episode, I've noticed that I'm attempting to tackle an entire cinematic trend and have lost my way. I apologize. Let's get back to Thor 2. In this movie, there is some science meets magic stuff again. Some foreboding aliens again. Thor and Loki being hilariously cute together again. An Academy Award winner Natalie Portman being underutilized for the amazing actress that she is. Again. There are a lot of thematic similarities to the first Thor, which, to the surprise of no one, ended up working much better the first time around. The only thing that the sequel manages to capitalize on is its use of Tom Hiddleston as the mischievous and delightful Loki. Honestly, this movie should have been called Thor and Loki, The Dark World, where adopted brothers are awesome together. Seriously, Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston have amazing chemistry in this setting, and Marvel wisely caught on to the Hiddleston hype soon after the first Thor came out two and a half years ago. So despite my ramblings earlier, Thor 2 is still worth your time and money, especially since it's free at the JC Cinema. It is a lot of the same that you've come to expect from Marvel sequels, but still a fun time. And who knows, maybe if you're not super hungover, you'll enjoy it more than I did. But that's going to do it for me today, folks. Be sure to check out my next episode, where I do my Oscar show rant on who should win, who should lose, and who doesn't even deserve to be there in the running? Ugh, American Hustle. Be, be sure to follow me on Twitter, at ADOD Film Critic, right here on the screen, as well, because I'll be live tweeting the Oscars this Sunday night. Looking forward to seeing you all on the red carpet. Have a fabulous week. Ask yourself. you sacrifice for what you believe when do we start